Happy New Year, Happy New Year. Uh, as it's coming here, um, today's a great day. It being um, the last uh, day of 2017. So as we um, prepare uh, for this morning's message, let's go to our Father in prayer, and then we're going to have a good study here this morning. Let's pray. Father, as we just calm our hearts right now and prepare to hear you speak to us through your word, I just pray that our hearts are so attentive to your voice. And Father, that we may grasp these words that are going to be read and studied and, and preached and, and apply it to our lives so, so that, Father, as we look into these words, that you will bless us and that we will glorify your name. Thank you so much uh, for uh, your son, Jesus, who, who uh, through your spirit, uh, allows us to be able to have these words that we can read and, uh, and study. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Uh, we're, here we are closing out this year. And um, so there's, I like this little graphic right there. We're, we're ending 2017 and we're going into 2018. And one of the, uh, yes, we need to praise the Lord for that. And one of the things that I like to do towards the end of the year is think about the past year and then you kind of prepare for the next year. Before we wrap it up, we want to uh, actually kind of do it like a little retro personally and think about how, how far God has taken us. And I have a couple of different uh, thoughts for us to uh, center our attention on so that we can do a great job uh, as we prepare for the new year. You know, the scripture that I want to use as a platform for today is in 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5 through 6, the Bible says, examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you unless, of course, you fail the test? And I trust that you will discover that we have not failed the test. So as we uh, look backwards uh, to 2017 in the year, I think it's good for our hearts to be able to just do some self-check or a self-examination. I know, I know every time you hear the word exam, you, you don't like it. That's, that's a bad word, right? Final exam is not great. When you go to your doctors to get your exams, nobody likes that. If you're about ready to get cert certification for your job and you have to be tested, this, it's not a popular word, I, I, I get that. But it's very helpful from time to time to do self-checks. And really, it's not a negative thing, it's a positive thing. You know, this past year, we, we began the year just having a series on faith, hope, and love. With, with the whole point being, if we can just focus on these three things, faith, hope, love, and ask God to increase our faith and our hope and, our love, and love, God was going to do amazing things in our life. And I really believe he has done some amazing things collectively in our church. And I know personally, individually in my life, and I know of many of you, he's done some amazing things in your life. So as, as we look backwards, as we think about how far God is taking us, um, I want us to just really just stop and just, and just praise God here for, for a second. God is a good God. And today, we're going to focus on three words that's going to help us focus on this goodness and this greatness of our God. So we went into 2016, 2017 with faith, hope, and love. I want us to close the year out with these three thoughts. Gratitude, grace, and growth as we close out the year. We, we begin the year with God give us more faith, increase our hope, and help us to love more. As we close out the year, I want us to think about retrospectively with gratitude, with, with grace, and for our growth. Our growth. Let's start off with gratitude. 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 Are you grateful for God's blessings on your life this past year? I think that's really the question that uh, I think that is going to drive this thought. It is great gratitude. Is gratitude. In 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 34, this is a great section of scripture where David is commissioning the singers to write a song of gratitude. And right at the end of this great song of gratitude, because God was establishing his temple, he was doing some amazing things. The, the, the concluding verse is simply, give thanks to the Lord 
for he is good. His love endures forever. Can we read this verse together here? Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Okay, now we want everybody to actually say it now, okay? With a little bit of this volume so that God can hear this. He says, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. One more time. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. And we ought to be grateful because God is a good God. God is so good, and he's been so good uh, to all of us this past year, and we should be grateful. In Colossians chapter 2 and verse 6, the scriptures basically say, So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, strengthened in the faith, as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness, with thankfulness. You know, there's two ways that we can look at our lives. We can look at our lives with thankfulness and appreciation and gratitude, or we can look back at our lives and we see the, the problems, the, the challenges. And sometimes we also often, too often, are grumbling and complaining and criticizing and being negative. As we do our retrospective, we need to look back at 2016 with gratitude in our hearts. For the Lord, he is good and his love endures forever. Are you grateful or are you grumbling? That's really the question that we need to kind of apply to our lives. Are you grateful or are you grumbling? Do you look at your life as the, ha the glass being half full or half empty? What's your perspective on things? You know, it's so great to be able to be around people who are filled with gratitude. They're so much more happier, isn't that true? Wouldn't you rather be around, hang around somebody who's grateful than somebody who's not grateful? Somebody, uh, people who are, are filled, are overflowing with thanksgiving are happy, they're joyful. Even sometimes in the most difficult, try, trying situations, there's a joy that, that comes off of the life of somebody that understands that God is good. And you know, there's, uh, there's so many people that I could just, just, uh, just come into my mind right now who are in very challenging situations, but their joy level is off the chart because of gratitude because of gratitude. I'd rather be around people like that because they're conscious of God. But then there are some other people, even though they have been blessed by God, they don't recognize the blessings as from God. And, they, and, and, and their lives are filled with, with the negativity. The glass is, is, is half empty kind of people. And they're not as uh, uh, pleasant to be around. And that's how God views our lives too. God looks at his children are, uh, as, are, are you a grateful child or are you a grumbling child? Are you, are you opening up your Christmas gifts and go, oh man, I can't believe I didn't get the right, this is not the right color. And like, mom, dad, I can't believe you didn't, or I'm just grateful to be able to have parents. I'm just grateful to be able to have gifts. I'm just grateful to be able to have a, a home. Are you grateful? Or are you grumbling? Are you grumbling? You know, I, I was looking at this, this past, the past year, and, and one way that I would like us to all, if you can do this today or, or even tomorrow, if you have a phone that you took a lot of pictures on, one thing that you can do is just kind of go through your pictures and just kind of just retrace you know, all, all the different times where, where, where you've been blessed by God. That's one of the quickest ways to go, I'm so grateful. Now, I was doing this the other day and just, just going through my sermons, uh, going through my quiet times, going through pictures. And the thing that stood out to me, to my own heart more than anything, is I am so grateful for my family. I started the year off, it was incredible because I got a chance to, to fly to Milwaukee and um, be with my grandmother as she had her 95th birthday. And she's still with me. And I'm so grateful. It was just great to be able to stop and just go, oh, I'm, I can't believe I have, I have grandparents. I remember um, going there and spending time with my grandfather, who's 94 years old, and spending time with my mom, who's still here. Yes, my dad is no longer here, and yes, my younger brother is no longer here, but I'm grateful for the family that I have. 
I was able to spend time with my sister. And, and of course, and, and then later in that year, I was able to, to go to Boston and, and preach at the Boston Church of Christ and spend time with my brother and my sister-in-law. This past summer, while well, I was able, uh, Sharon and I and, and her and her, her family were able to go to California, we were able to spend time with her mother and, and my sister-in-law's gra- gratitude. As I go through the year, all these pictures, uh, especially with my family, with my dear wife, with my incredible sons, and then my heart starts overwhelming, that feeling of, God, who am I? To be able to have these relationships, and then to close the year out, looking at the pictures of my family, looking at the pictures of, of Christmas, being grateful. Are you grateful? I'm grateful. Because we won't always have our family with us. You know, every year, our family members pass away. And unless we pass away first, then we have to be grateful. You know, it was, uh, unfortunately, I got a, a phone call the other day. This is, this is so, and we need to be praying for uh, Laura Storer, this Sharon's sister. Her, her, her dad passed away uh, two days ago in a car crash. Her, her biological father. Just like that. And we need to be praying for the Stewart family. Definitely be praying for Laura because we, we just don't know. It happens all the time, every week. And we need to be grateful for family and grateful for friends. I have the best friends in this world. And as I was just going through this past year, I just, my heart is overflowing. I can't believe I have so many friends. And then so many great friends and new friends. I'm grateful. We had staff dinner the other, uh, a couple of days ago. And I just sat around a table and just, I was just, my heart was just overflowing with gratitude. As I was looking across my wife, God has been, I remember starting the year off, while my wife had, well, she was sick to begin the year off. And I was just, I was just praying for her. This time last year, just praying for her. God has healed my wife. As I went down, the women were sitting across the table. And I saw Tawana, and she was, we had such a great time. But I just thought about, man, just a few years ago, to Tawana, I mean, she, she was in an emergency room uh, uh, near death because of some internal bleeding. And I, we went down, and then I, I, I got a picture of, uh, of uh, Cassandra Scott. And I looked at her and just like, wow. I'm just amazed because years ago, I remember pacing up and down in the hospital with Carlos praying for her because she had an aneurysm or in brain surgery. And I looked around and I thought about myself just years ago. I, I, I almost left the, this, this place looking back. I mean, I had a, 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 a heart failure issue that almost took me out. And I was going down just one by one, and I just couldn't help but think, I got the best friends. I am so grateful. I thought about my family, how God has healed my family. My, my, my son, Winston, was almost going to have to have surgery, but he didn't have surgery. I thought about Cameron, who had, who had just a knee replacement, but just the stress that was uh, her, her knee surgery this past summer, and, and that, that was a little stressful. And I said, Lord, you've answered so many prayers. And I am overflowing with gratitude. As we look back on 2017, each one of us ought to be praising Jesus Christ. For the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. As we examine, as we examine this past year, none of us should leave here with a grumbling spirit towards God. We ought to be like, God, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can you shout his name real quick? Thank you, Jesus. Because God is a good God. And we ought to be overflowing with gratitude. You know, it's impossible to be overflowing with thanksgiving and always complaining at the same time. You realize that? I bet you can't do it. You got to choose which one you're going to be. Are you going to be the complainer or the person that's always saying thank you? And I'll give you a challenge. Let's, let's be grateful for each other. You know what? You know, we, we can tear each other down or we can build each other up. You know, we have the power to be the wind beneath other people's wings or we have the ability to be a thorn in each other's side. 
as we close this year out, let's be grateful. Let's communicate with our words. Let's not just assume people know that, that, you're, that you're grateful for them, but let us say, I, I'm, I'm, I appreciate you. I'm so thankful for you. And let's build each other up in the Lord. And when you're going through a difficult time, if God grants you in the next few hours to be able to see in 2018, as you go through a difficult time in 2018, let's praise our way through those down times. When you're discouraged, when you're lonely, when you're hurting, when you're frustrated, when you feel like pulling out your hair, when you go, I can't believe, let's praise your way right through those difficult times. The devil doesn't want you thinking about all the good things. Satan wants you always to think about the negative thing. So when you're going through a difficult time, you just praise your way right on through. You count your blessings. You go, I can't believe I, I have it as good as I have it and worship your way through. It might take you a day or two. It might take you a week to worship your way through that downtime. But I want to encourage you to make a decision in advance. When you're going through it, to praise your way right on through that downtime. Be grateful as you approach this coming year. Grace. That's the other word, grace. Grace. It's probably one of my favorite words. I, my first sermon was about the grace of God. When I was 15 years old, I caught up my grandmother when I was living in Madison, Wisconsin, and I gave my very first sermon that I ever preached. I remember calling up my grandmother, saying, I caught her gang gang, gang gang, um, I'm about ready to preach to the whole congregation. And she was so happy because she wanted me to be a preacher since I was a little boy. And she said, baby, I got your sermon. And I was like, I was, okay, I, I, was, I wasn't really calling her to ask her to give me a sermon. <laughs> But you got to know my grandmother. She was a, such a strong woman. She said, okay, baby, I got your sermon. She typed it up, and three days later, it came in the mail. I think I caught her just on a, a Saturday or something, and then three, my sermon was typed up, ready to go for me to preach on that next Sunday night as I was going to be preaching for the, to the whole congregation. And it was, it, was a, it was a simple sermon. It was called The Grace of God. The Grace of God. It was a scripture, it was Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. That was a text. And this scripture has meant more to me than any other passage scripture in all the Bible. Yes, it was the first sermon I ever preached, but it's the very theme of my life, the thing that I have had to learn, the thing that I have to be strong in all of my life. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. As for you, you are dead in your transgressions and sins. When you followed the ways of this world. The ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now working, those who are disobedient. All of us lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following desires and thoughts like the rest. We too were by nature objects of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive uh, with Christ. Even when we were dead in our transgressions, it is by grace that you've been saved. And God raised us up with Christ Jesus and seated us in the heavenly realms with Christ Jesus so that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness towards us in Jesus Christ. It's by grace that you've been saved through faith. This is not from yourselves. It's a gift of God. Not by works so that no one will boast. For we are God's workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. This verse has strengthened my life from the beginning until right now. See, when I did that sermon, I didn't really get grace. I understood that grace was God's unmerited favor. I knew the facts about grace. I, 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 could, I did give a good sermon. Um, they weren't necessarily my insights and convictions. But remember, my grandmother gave me the, uh, the eight-point sermon to preach. I read it. We were out, I think, really early. I think I, I preached like for about eight minutes, and then we were done. I got a little nervous, and I panicked, and I read the, script, read the sermon. But all throughout my life, God's been teaching me the meaning of that sermon. So you got to fall to understand grace. Can I get an amen? you got to mess up to understand how good God is. 
See, grace is not something that you learn intellectually. You got to learn it spiritually. You got to learn it emotionally. Listen, when you know you've messed up, when you've hurt God, when you've disappointed God, that when you realize that you are a mess, then grace is more, is more gracious. When you know you're in trouble and you know you should be punished and you know you deserve to get it because God is a holy God. God is also a God filled with wrath. And he must punish his children when they mess up. And then when Jesus says, grace is going to be given in you, it changes your life. See, we need to, as we close out this year, stop and think about how good and merciful and gracious God has been. Because I really believe if we stop and think and think about how good and gracious he's been, it will change our life. God is a God of grace. Jesus said it like this when Paul was overwhelmed. He said, Lord, take these thorns from my side. Jesus said to him, my grace is sufficient for my power is made perfect in weakness. My grace is sufficient. I'm here to say as we close out this year that God's grace is sufficient. As you examine yourself, nobody in here can examine themselves and look back at 2017 and go, man, I really did great. Because the Holy Spirit will be convicting you otherwise. The Holy Spirit is going to be convicting you of your failures, of of your faults, of your sins. The Holy Spirit is going to bring to your mind times when you have lied, times when you've lusted, times when you've been selfish, times when you've been overweening, having overweening pride, times when you have just struggled to give. The Holy Spirit will convict you of your unrighteousness. And then you're going to need grace. So as you think about this 2017, how should we approach our self example Well, you've got to be strong in the grace. Strong in the grace. This is what Paul told Timothy. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. I'm here to say as your preacher, you need to be strong in the grace. Yes, you need to first, you need to admit where you've been and be honest with yourself. Don't fake yourself out. You got to be honest. You got to be able to evaluate yourself and examine yourself with integrity and nail yourself with humility. I'm not talking about something that you do to somebody else. I'm talking about having this conversation with yourself. But then after you do that, you need to be thinking about the grace that's going to be coming to you if you decide to follow Jesus Christ and be strong in the grace. And I have found out that grace would make you stronger spiritually. Because it's that same grace that God uh, gives us when he calls us to follow him. See, God's grace is not cheap. Sometimes people think that grace is just a get out of jail card. That you can just mess up as much as you want knowing that God is going to give you grace. No, see, that means you don't really get grace. Because it's by God's grace that he's actually inviting you to discipleship. It's that same grace that he's saying, come and follow me. And I want you, even though you have messed up in your life, how many of us are appreciative of God's grace? Are you grateful for him? Because it's that grace that he beckons us. It's that grace that he invites us. He says, I want to use your life anyway to do great things. The devil doesn't want you to think that, though. The devil wants you to look back at your life and go, I'm a mess. God God will never want to use me. I've disappointed him so much. I've, 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 I've made New Year's resolutions just to go back on them all the time. But God is saying, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in your weakness to be strong in the grace. Are you grateful God is a God of second chances? God is a God of second and chances and third chances and fourth chances. He's, he's a patient God. And it's that grace. If you've, if you've come here at D.C. Regional, I want you to know this church is a church that's centered on the grace of God. We're not trying to work our way to, into God's love. God, we realize that God loves us anyway. See, while we were sinners, Christ laid down his life for us. And it's that grace, it's that love, it's that mercy that makes us want to be our best for God. Because he's worthy. 
He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our lives. Grace. Gratitude. Grace. And when you get to gratitude and when you understand God's grace, it makes you want to grow. Growth. 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 When you think about growth, we're thinking about the future. Where are we going? Where, where are we going? I think growth is just a, a key word for all, for all of us. Because when you get grace, you grow. When you get grace, I'm talking about grace and all of its truth. I'm not talking about cheap grace. I'm not talking about surface grace. I'm talking about when you really understand grace. Grace is the fuel that makes disciples grow. True grace. Not the grace that, that allows you to sin with no consequences. No, the grace that you understand that, listen, Jesus paid the price for me and it's, that was painful for him. And because I believe what he did and I trust that he sacrificed for me, it's that mercy, it's that grace that makes me indebted to him and it makes me want to be the very best Christian I can be. Grace helps you Grow. There's two ways that I believe God wants us to grow. He wants us to grow spiritually. That's called spiritual maturity, that kind of growth. Spiritual maturity, which is, which is something that happens individually. See, God doesn't, he, he sees us for who we are, but, but he, he selects us right where we are with all of our weaknesses, with all of our challenges. But God is not content on leaving us the way we are. God expects his children to grow. And if we don't grow and mature, something is wrong spiritually. That's not the way nature works. Babies grow stronger into adults. If they don't, there's something wrong. And I believe that's what God is, is, is asking us to examine ourselves. Have we grown spiritually? You know, that's the job of a minister. That's the job of, of, the, of Christians as we relate with one another. Paul said it like this. He is the one that we proclaim, talking about Jesus, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. To this end, I strangely contend with all of his energy, Christ so powerfully Works, not words, works in me. He's the one we proclaim because Paul said, man, I just want to present everybody in the church spiritually mature. So as you examine yourself, you have to ask yourself, have you grown this past year spiritually? Have you gotten weaker? You know, the, the, the best way to grow is to make sure you have the right nourishment. You know, if you stop eating for any length of time, you're going to get weaker physically. It's the same thing spiritually. I believe many of us, are, as we close out this year, we, to be honest, many of you have not grown spiritually. I'm glad that you're here, but you're weaker spiritually. You're weaker. And part of it is because your diet has been poor. You haven't been eating correctly. You've been, you've been ingesting all of the world, and you've not been ingesting and abiding in the Word of God. So it's not surprising that you're not strong. Err. If we want to be stronger, I, I, we, we need to make sure that we are uh, living by this, this bread of life. That, that, that every word that comes out of this is for our strengthening on the inside out. So that we can grow. And it's not just to know the scriptures, it's to depend upon God's word. So that he can help us Mature spiritually. Growth spiritually. And growth also means multiplication numerically. God wants us to numerically grow. God, he, when God made Adam and Eve, he says, I want you to be fruitful, and I want you to fill the earth. I want you to multiply. Listen, God gives glory when people grow numerically. When it's fa God loves a big family, his family. Growth Numerically, And we, this is where I really want the church to get ready for multiplication. Multiplication. Because when we get gratitude, when we get grace, when we really get it, we grow. But we have to be ready for growth. The vision for this church is for the disciples to increase rapidly. In Acts chapter 6, this was what was going on in the Bible. It says, in those days when the number of disciples were, were increasing, 
Those days are right, are right here in front of us. This is, this is really, I believe, the smallest is we're going we're gonna to be. And if you like a small church, well, I'm not sure if you're going to like D.C. Regional. Because what's going to be happening here by the Spirit of God, God is going to be increasing us rapidly, and we have to be ready for growth. Major growth. Because vision works. Because I really believe, I just detect it, I sense it, I see it, I know it, I feel it, that God is setting up his congregation to multiply. I see it in you. There's so many confirmations all along the way. People are growing in their faith. People are sharing their faith. People are growing. I'm seeing the people coming out of the woodworks saying, I- I'm going to do this. I want to do this. And the-, the church, we've got to be ready for growth because it's happening. I just put it out there just past this, this, this last month. We said, we've got to be ready for, for potentially getting this building. And, and, um, and we've been praying for that. Um, uh, for this potential uh, uh, purchase uh, of this building. And, and it's always, I feel, I feel a burden about it. But that burden was eased when we went before the church and we said, well, you know what, we need to raise some money real fast just so we have some money for closing, potentially here in, in January. And you know what, and the church, just um, that, that one week, uh, almost $50,000 came in within that, that one week. Just, as, just going to the church and saying, we need to raise this money. And you have responded incredibly. And that made me feel great. That just made me say, you know what? The church is ready to grow. And money is still coming in. Money is still coming in. And that's just for that initial seed. I'm so grateful for all of you who have given. I'm so grateful for you because that is your vote that says, let's go for it. That is your way of saying, you know what? We, we want to be ready for growth and multiplication. And it's not going to be, listen, this job is not going to be Daryl Reed and the staff. No, it's going to be all of us preparing ourselves for multiplication. And I'm so encouraged by so many of you because this building right here is, is right there. I got some meetings coming up here this week I need to be praying about. It's just the ball is just advancing. It's, it's, it's right there. And um, potentially, I'll, I'll probably give you an update next week, but there, we, we're like in the 80, 90 percent uh, range of purchasing a school building that's being used for a church right now. It's used, to, used for a daycare center that God is going to use it for D.C. regional to multiply through this area. And yet the school, this school, this church, this ministry center is still not going to be the focus of our attention. It's our communities all around this area that God has a vision for growth. And for those of you who are members of D.C. Regional, you need to praise God that, that you are in the church for a time such as this. Because people are going to look back in the future and go, well, you, were, you were part of that original church plant team when, when, when you sacrificed, when, when, you, when, you, when you gave it all, and then the church just exploded all throughout the region through, through, through that group. And you're going to say, yeah, I was, I was one of those original members. And you're going to be able to tell your children, your children's children, that, that you planted those faith seeds when the church was still small. So, I'm going to conclude by saying just get ready for numerical growth. Get ready. Get ready for numerical growth in your family. Get ready for numerical growth in your community. Get ready for numerical growth uh, in, in this congregation. Get ready. God wants to use you. God wants to use your gifts, your unique talents, your unique skills, your unique abilities. You got to dust it off and be ready. God is calling us all higher. Each one of us. It doesn't make a difference where you've been, but God needs you. We need you. We all need each other to get ready for what God is going to do. We need every youth. They're not, they're not just the ministry. They're part of the leadership. Every single youth that we have. Get ready. Get ready to impact your communities. Get ready to impact your, your high schools. Get ready to impact your, your, your middle schools. Get ready. 
Get ready for multiplication on the campuses. Get ready for multiplications in every neighborhood from Southern Maryland to Virginia to Montgomery County, all throughout Prince George's County. Get ready for numerical growth. Are you ready? It's not even up for, for debate. This is what the Holy Spirit is trying to do. We just make sure, we have to just make sure we are ready when the Spirit calls. And I really believe that's where we are as a church. We have to get ready as we go into 2018 for God to do a miracle among us. So as we reflect, as we think back, let's think back with gratitude. Let's think back with grace. And let's think forward with growth. Let's go to our Father in prayer this time. Our Father, as we close out this year, we just want to just worship you and thank you and praise you for you are worthy of all honor. Father, you are worthy for, for all praise. For you are holy, holy, holy. And here we are as your children, basking in your glory. We just can't help but just say thank you, Jesus. Thank you for every blessing that you have poured out on us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for infusing us and filling us throughout, uh, 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 through and through. And with gratitude and with grateful and gracious hearts, we commit to growing, to not being the same. But Father, we, we were, we're offering you our lives and we're asking you to take it and use it, mold us, make us become whoever and whatever you want us to be for your glory. I'm so grateful for D.C. Regional Christian Church. Father, for every member that's here, every laborer, from, from taking care of our children to taking care of the finances. Father, to, for, to doing every, even the seemingly, seemingly mundane things like setting up or even incredible things like singing and leading in worship. Father, from just opening the doors and greeting people, Father, to being uh, involved in, in uh, ministering to people who are not even here because they're sick and shut in. I'm so grateful for every laborer here. And with that gratitude, as we close out this year, and as we anticipate you doing incredible things this next year, Father, we offer you our very lives. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And to God be the glory. Thank you very much.